Affinity Publisher just got a major update. There's so many little changes and improvements, but in this video, I'm going to show you the 10 biggest changes in Affinity Publisher 2.0. Let's get started. The first change you'll notice is Affinity's new interface. All of the tools and panels have gotten a nice redesign. Now everything looks cleaner and more modern. Here's what Affinity Publisher used to look like, and here's what it looks like after the update. Everything still looks familiar, but now the whole program feels more modern and up-to-date. But even though the updated interface is nice, the next changes are even more exciting. So next, let's take a look at Footnotes, which is my favorite new addition to Affinity Publisher. To add Footnotes, we need to get out the Notes panel, which you can do by going to Window, References, Notes. Next, we need to place our cursor in the spot where we want to add a footnote. Then, all we need to do is press on this button that looks like a bookmark, and Affinity immediately adds a footnote for us. Now we just need to type whatever we want the footnote to say. We can continue this process to add as many footnotes as we want. Just place your cursor wherever you want to add a footnote, then click on the footnote button. Then type whatever you want it to say. I'll just repeat this process to add one more footnote. Using the notes panel, we can also stylize our footnotes. I won't go over all of these options right now, but just to show you how this works, Let's increase the space in between each of our footnotes. To do this, I'll set the gap between to 10. Now all of our footnotes have some nice breathing room. The next biggest change to Affinity Publisher is the new document dialog box. The whole thing looks new and improved, but there are two new additions that I like in particular. The first is that we now have a live preview of what our document will look like. So if I change the size, you can see that this preview is instantly updated. Or if I decided to add margins, then they're instantly shown in the preview. The other great addition is the Recents tab, which allows you to quickly find and open any recent documents that you've been working on. The next update is called Quick Grid. This new feature allows you to easily make a grid of shapes. First, I'll just get out the Rectangle tool. Then, as I click and drag to make the rectangle, I can press on the right arrow key on my keyboard to make a second rectangle. You can do this as many times as you want to make more rectangles going across and up or down. And if you want to add a little space in between each shape, just hold one of the arrow keys. Then, when I lift up on my cursor, there's a beautiful grid of rectangles. You can make grids like this with any shape or even text frames. So if I were to get out the Frame Text tool, I could use the arrow keys while clicking and dragging to make a grid of text frames. And just like before, I can hold down the arrow keys to add spacing. The next update is Auto Flow Images. To see this in action, I've already added four picture frames to this page. Next, I'll use the Place Image tool to load all of the images that I want to add to my document. I'll select all 20 images in this folder. I could add these images one at a time, but now in Affinity 2.0, I can add all of them at once. First, hold down Shift to select all of the images, then click in the first picture frame. And just like that, Autoflow Images has added all of my photos. Affinity used all of the picture frames on the page, and then duplicated that page over and over until all of the photos were added. But as cool as that is, the fun doesn't end there. Let me undo that. And then use the Place Image tool to load three images. With Affinity's new update, we have another new feature called Repeat. I'll set this to 8. Now I'll perform another image autoflow by selecting all of the images and then clicking in the first picture frame. 
Once again, Affinity duplicated my page over and over until all of my images had been added. But this time, each of my three images was repeated eight times before Affinity moved on to the next photo. That's because I set the repeat number to eight. This can be a helpful feature for something like business cards, where you'd want to have your business card repeated multiple times so that you can easily print and cut out all of your duplicate business cards. The next update is called Books. Books allow you to combine multiple Affinity files into a single PDF. This is a great option for when multiple people are working on different parts of the same project and you want to combine everyone's work into a single file. First, we need to add the Books panel, which we can do by going to Window, Books. Now from the Books panel, press on the little hamburger menu. Each of the Affinity files you want to combine is considered a chapter, so click on Add Chapter. Then select the Affinity files that you want to combine. For demonstration purposes, I've added four Affinity files that are all about different colored things. I'd like the chapter on red things to come first, so I'll drag that to the top. Now all we need to do is come back to the hamburger menu, and then choose Export. Then we can export a PDF that's a combination of all four of the Affinity files. As you can see, all four files have been combined into a single PDF, and best of all, the page numbers are synced up with each other, so each document flows perfectly into the next. The next new feature is text conversion. Sometimes you'll accidentally type something into a text frame, but later on realize you should have written it in an artistic text box. Well, now that's an easy fix. Just go to Layer, Convert to Art Text. Then you can easily resize the text and text box at the same time. And best of all, this process works in reverse too. With any text box, you can go to Layer, Convert to Text Frame. Then you can resize the frame independently of the text. The next update is Select Same. This allows you to select multiple layers that have the same attributes. For example, maybe I want to select all of the red objects on this page. In that case, all I need to do is select one of them, and then go to Select, Select Same, Fill Color. Now all of the red things are selected, and I can easily change the color of all of them at once. The other feature that goes right along with this is Select Object. For example, if I wanted to select all of the shapes on this page, I would just need to select one of them, and then go up to Select, Select Object, Shapes. And just like that, all of my shapes have been selected. Now I can easily change the color of all of them at the same time. The next update is to Layer Effects. Inside the Layer Effects dialog box, you can now add multiple copies of the same effect. For example, I could add multiple outlines to this square. The other great addition is now you can easily bring layer effects from one layer to another. All you need to do is drag this little FX onto another layer, and then all of the layer effects will be copied over. And finally, the tenth biggest change is the new Style Picker tool. To get out this tool, just click on the little triangle that's right under the Color Picker tool. Then, make sure you don't have any layer selected, which you can do by pressing Escape on your keyboard. Then click on the object that has your desired style. Style includes all of these options found in the context toolbar. Then you can click on as many objects as you want to paste the sampled style. If you want to take a new sample, you first need to unload the current sample from your picker. Then you can take a new sample and paste that style onto other objects. You can also do this with text. Just unload your previous sample, take a new sample, and then click on the word that you want to affect. 
You can even click and drag to affect multiple words at the same time. I'm so excited for all of the new updates to Affinity Publisher. But if you also want to learn about the biggest updates to Affinity Photo and Affinity Designer, I made a 10 biggest changes video for each of those programs as well. I'll leave a link to those videos in the video description. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoy the new Affinity updates as much as I do.